Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. Welcome to everyone who's coming on and all of my replay viewers. Thanks so much for showing up. I'm going to flip my camera around so I can talk with you guys better. Hello, if this is your first time with me, my name is Keely and I am the owner of lovehopeadventure.com. I blog about the marriage relationship, intimacy and in marriage, how you can go deeper in your relationship with your spouse, and sometimes I blog about just lifestyle things. Hey Lori, thanks for coming on, and Janet, guys, thanks for coming on and joining me today, um, and Patricia. Um, so I wanted, I'm going to just talk about some things, and then if y'all want to do a Q&A at the end, feel free, because I know somebody actually asked me about that recently, and I thought, well, you know, no one's ever wanted to ask me anything. So, oh, thank you. I'm trying to dress up a little bit. I got to shoot a video here um, for a promotional thing for a uh, part of my job, and I want it to look a little bit nicer, so I might not even be done with this. But yes, I, I don't always dress up with makeup and everything, but I want to look nice for this video. So um, anyways, this week, I don't know about you guys, but this week has been really hard for me. I've had like a lot of things happening, and obviously this is not the only week that I have had in my life that is hard, but, um, you know, sometimes there are some hard things that are harder than others. There are some things you're going to deal with in life that are just so very hard, and you're going to be tired of dealing with it. Am I right? You're going to be tired of dealing with the hard things, and oftentimes we get really tired of dealing with the same hard thing. The same hard thing. It's like we've got that one kid that we're constantly getting on to about the same thing and we get tired of dealing with it. Or we've got that one strained relationship with a family member and we're like so sick of playing the same game with them. Or maybe we are just going through financial troubles and it's like, holy cow, can we get a break? I'm so tired of dealing with not having enough money to buy food or feeling like I can't um, go get anything we need. There are just, all three things are happening there. Well, I think that happens for a lot of us. And I kind of just had one of those days yesterday where I was like, I'm just so tired of dealing with the hard things because there have been um, some difficult, difficult things happening in my week. And we just go through periods like this. And I'll tell you that you know, for probably the last two and a half years, we've had some really, really hard things happen in our life and in the lives of those we love, which has truly, truly impacted us. And it's been hard. And can I just let you in on a little something? When I am in the midst of that misery and that hard time, do you know what I don't want to hear? What I don't want to hear is it's going to be all, be all be okay. I just, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that I'm strong enough to get through it. I don't want to hear that um, it's going to work out. I don't want to hear that God's making it all happen for a specific reason. You know what I just want is to just complain for just a couple of minutes how frustrated I am with the hard thing going on in my life. That is so hard for people to take. Uh, somebody says, sometimes I need to have someone say, yeah, that stinks. I think we all need that. Now, this is confessions of a fixer. I am a fixer. I want to fix everyone's problems. So I am like the worst person to even have a, this complaint because when someone comes to me and they start complaining or not complaining, but just really sharing with me about their hard time, I immediately want to jump into well, I want to fix that for you. So here's all the five things you can do to fix that in your life. And I have had to learn really, I've really had to learn this in the last like year or so. And it's not been easy for me to learn this. And I'm still learning this um, because I've just, I've kind of actually damaged some relationships for a period of time because I've tried to fix everything for that person. And all they really needed and wanted from me was for me to just be like, yeah, I'm going to sit here in misery with you, and I'm going to feel sa sorry with you, not um, try and fix that problem or take it away from you. And I can tell you that as a very strong-willed person who is, like, I am very strong-willed, I think, and pretty stubborn, and I also am very opinionated, 
I don't need somebody else to fix it for me. I really want to fix it for myself. Sometimes I am going to need some help and I really kind of have to get there on my own. And um, I just, I don't know. Sometimes I just don't want someone to come and be rosy around me when I am in the midst of misery. And I know I'm not the only one out there. I think there is a time for encouragement. I think there is a time for you to say, goodness, I, you know, I know this is really tough for you right now, but it will pass and you're going to get through it. And I know you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel right now, but sometimes that is not, that's just not what you need to lead with all of the time. And I think it is what we, what we need to leave with. And, um, I think that the reason why my, um, why I've really had to learn this this year is that I have had some people in my life. Yeah, if somebody says it's hard to hear how great a friend is doing financially when we are really struggling. I've been there. I'm going to tell you, I did a Facebook fast for quite some time because we could not afford to do a lot of things. And um, one year in particular, we we decided we just could not take a family vacation. And when I would log on to Facebook, everybody and their brother was on vacation. And, um, yeah, it's really hard. Facebook can be a huge depressant. And I actually try not to post much of anything on Facebook on my personal page. If you go to Love Hope Adventure page, you're going to see that I do post a lot of marriage um, tips and helps and articles and things over there from other bloggers. But if you were, like, my actual personal friend, I rarely post anything. And I'll tell you why. Nobody wants to hear me complain, but, but how many people really want to see the good things happening in my life because I just don't want to post the good things that are happening in my life and make somebody else feel bad because good things aren't happening for them today. So yeah, I, I really struggle with social media. And if you guys follow me on Instagram, I struggle over there too. I literally never know what to post a picture of because I'm like, same issue as Facebook. I just don't want people to formulate this idea of me on Instagram of something that I'm not. And Unlike Facebook, Facebook is people I legitimately know. And I know I've got like 500 friends, but these are people I legitimately know and have legitimately real relationships with at least at some point in my life. So Instagram is not that. That's very different. And I just don't want people to get this idea that life is always rosy for me, guys, because um, when somebody says secondary infertility, Facebook is full of baby pictures. Yeah, I know. Facebook is full of baby pictures, and if you have dealt with infertility, or maybe you've dealt with a miscarriage, and I've been there, I've dealt with miscarriages, and I'm really thankful that I wasn't super active on Facebook when I was dealing with my miscarriages, because I cannot even imagine how difficult that would have been for me to see other people holding their, their babies when I had lost mine. So I am kind of glad that I got through that without the Facebook drama. Um... But yeah, I think that I, I'm not like trying to poo-poo all over Facebook and social media, guys, because obviously Periscope is a, fo a social media thing, and I am able to reach a lot of people with my message through Facebook, and I can interact with a lot of people that I care about through that outlet, so I'm not trying to poo-poo all over it and say you should never get on there, um, but I do think you have to be careful. And, you know, I think that if you... I don't know, if you're in a hard place, you really do need to limit your exposure to other people. And, um, you know, Austin and I, we have been through some pretty traumatic things ourselves a couple of years ago that really just rocked our world and made it very hard for us in our marriage. We weren't handling things well. We were very hurt by a lot of situations. And I tell you, when I would try and share these things with people, um, my closest friends, I think they were just like, Keely, that is really terrible, and I am really sorry for you, and they knew how to handle it, but if I would ever try to share these things with other people, it was just this constant bad, you know, bad advice, so, um, just a lot of bad responses, and I'm going to tell you that I've been very highly guilty of some of these bad responses, because when you see somebody going through so much misery, for such a long period of time, it can really wear you out, especially if you're a fixer like I am. And I'm a fixer. And so when somebody is coming to me on a regular basis telling me how horrible this thing is in their life, it drains me 
I don't know how it drains those that are not fixers because I just want to fix it. And I have had to learn a lot of endurance this year because I've had, you know, people that I love, I love, 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 who have been in some very draining times. And I just try to remind myself during that that I was that draining friend because my husband and I were going through something for like a solid like two years. And I'm sure nobody really wanted to talk to me because it was so difficult. Um, yes, and somebody says that they're not a fixer, but I empathize a lot, so it brings you down. Yeah, I'm, I empathize, like, way too much. I take people's feelings on, and I feel very responsible for them. Like, I should fix that stuff for them, so it's kind of hard um, for me. But at the same time, I try to remind myself that when I am in that place, I want to just stay there for at least a short period of time because here's the thing, guys. When things that are really hard that are going on in your life, if you if you don't allow yourself to deal with those feelings and those emotions, it, you're never going to stop having a hard time. You just you have to deal with it. You have to be able to say this really stinks. All right, we're do, we're struggling financially. This stinks. When I tell someone that I'm struggling financially, what I don't want to hear from them is, well, we're all dealing with financial struggles. I don't want to hear that. Um, I don't want to hear people push it aside and just say, oh, yeah, nobody has any money. Um, I, don't want pe I don't want to hear people talk about, uh, you know, try to relate to my financial struggles by saying, oh, yeah, I know how expensive things can be. And then I look at all the stuff they have and I think, I guess you and I have a different understanding of financial struggles. You know what I mean? And so I think that um, this has been a really, really hard thing for me to get myself, but I'm slowly, surely getting it. And, um, and I just kind of encourage you guys today that if you're in a hard place, that you, that you own it. You got to own it. Um, you need to own that hard place. Be okay with being there. I know it. I know you want it to go away. I know you want it to stop. But time oftentimes will take care of those things. And sometimes it could just be your mood or your attitude. So yesterday I felt in the pit about the situations that I'm dealing with this week. And you know this morning I got up. And um, I had just really prayed about it, and I got up this morning, I felt a lot better, and I felt more inspired than I have the entire week. Um, I gotta say, I haven't been terribly productive this week, which is kind of hard for me because I like to be productive, but this week I haven't been. So that makes me have a little bit of guilt for sure. But I've just tried to remind myself that it's okay to be in that hard place. It's okay that things are not okay. We're all the time just trying to make everything be so perfect. It's like, I just want my life to be ideal. I want my life to be perfect. And then if it can't be perfect, then, you know, I failed in some way. And we have to recognize that, man, it's just, it's okay. Oh, so, thank you. Somebody said my makeup's pretty. And I told somebody at the start of this script, I don't tend to wear very much makeup. And right now all I've got is some eye stuff. I don't ever, I try not to put anything on my face. It just bothers me. But I'm going to do a video in a few, and this is going to be a video that's promotional, so I kind of need to look a little bit nicer than usual. Um, thank you, though, for saying that. And um, But I think that we just, we want that hard stuff to end so fast, and we get so impatient, and then we don't handle it well. And, yeah, we just make kind of a big mess. But I'm going to tell you guys that it's in those hard things that you go through. When you get on the other side of them, you have learned the things that you really needed to learn in your life. You've gained perspective that you honestly couldn't get anywhere else. And it's okay. You, you, it's okay to be in the hard place. And it's okay to say you're in the hard place. And it's okay if you, and I'm not saying throw pity parties for yourself here. Um, but it's okay if you just let yourself be in it for a little while. You don't always have to be like, I've got to be cheerful and joyful and happy and make sure that everybody in the world knows that I'm okay. It's okay to let other people know that, man, you are just hating it. 
tighten it. And um, I think that, you know, I think we're so used to reading things on the internet, like bloggers, I mean, they make tons of money um, and get lots of clicks when they give all these answers to everyone who's got a problem. Um, and somebody says they feel the same way, they have to be happy all the time, and I don't think that's true. Um, but I think we will, we want to read all of these articles that will just tell us how to be happy and how to be okay and how to get through our problems. And sometimes we just got to let things take its course. And I don't really have an answer for your problem today. Whatever it is you're dealing with, whatever the hard thing is, because guys, we all have hard things. And if you don't have something hard going on right this minute, you're likely going to in the next couple of days or next month or sometime this year, we have no idea what's going to happen to us. And I don't have a five-step, you know, tips on how you can get through your hard thing. I'm just here to say that we all have hard things, and there's no real answer to some of them. There's not. There isn't an answer to some of the traumatic things that happen in our lives. There's not a good answer, at least. And uh, I don't think we should always be looking for answers. We want to, because we want to have the answers. We want to have the solution. And sometimes there's just no answer, and there's just no solution. And one day, I don't know, just one day, you, you look around and you realize that the problem has kind of resolved itself, and you don't even know how you got there. You're not sure how you got to the place where the problem was such a big deal, but one day you look around and you're like, man, things are actually kind of better, and how did we get here? How did we get to this place where things are better? So guys, I don't, I don't have an answer for your hard time today, but if you are de dealing with something, I want you to know you're not the only one. And um, we all have our hard things. And this has been a hard week for me. So I don't know if that's encouraging or another or anything. Um, somebody says, yeah, it's hard to just, fe just feel it and write it out. It's hard to write it out. It is. We were just so impatient. We were like, no, let's get this fixed now, God. I thought you were going to take care of me. I thought you were going to provide all my needs. Well, what what you doing now? You know, and I think that that's the amazing thing about God is that, um, well, thank you somebody for saying that. That's the amazing thing about God is that in the midst of devastation, man, we just have no clue how he's working. And sometimes we don't maybe ever know how he's working or um, maybe we don't know how he's going to work it out. But years later, in retrospect, we realize that those hard times, those hard things that we went through was God's way of just bringing us closer to him. And I mean, I don't even think I can pinpoint exactly how God has brought me closer to him through the hard things in my life, but I know he has. And even in the midst of some of these hard things, I'm like, well, God, where are you? What are you doing? I can't hear from you. I can't, I mean, you're not there. Where are you? And then I can look back and just see how he moved in those situations. And it's so blessing to me at that point. But it takes a lot of time. We've got to stop being this quick here, now, in a hurry culture. I think that because we're like that, um, and somebody says, thank you for transparency. Oh, well, I'm glad. I try to be really just open, honest, up front. It kind of like um, maybe scares people in real life. So <laughs> I'm the same in real life as I hear, am here on Periscope, but in real life, I think it's a little larger than life. So <laughs> um, I'm glad you guys are tuning in because, uh, and somebody says, you're trying to be okay with trials because I know God uses them. And he does. And we don't always even know how he uses them. So some people will be like, oh, yeah, you know, the Lord is blessing you through this. Well, gosh, there are some times where you just are not going to see how the Lord is blessing you through this. When someone you love dies. I mean, how is that a blessing? Let's stop trying to say that to people. Some things are horrible and awful and tragic and terrible. And there's absolutely no good in the situation. And I don't know how God redeems it. I really don't. I mean, not always. I think sometimes I get on the other side of these things and I think, well, I really saw how God was working with that. And then sometimes I'm like, well, God, what were you doing there? Seriously, I still don't understand. Why did you have these events line up so that thing could happen? Where is, where is your glory and honor in that? 
And um, I'm not talking specifically right this moment, like this week and the things I'm dealing with this week, but gosh, I've just, I've seen some situations in the past where I'm like, God, I don't, I, I don't know what you're going to do through this. What was all of that for? And there's no real answers, you know? Sometimes there just, there isn't, and we should stop trying to ask for them. And I know that's hard because we, we want answers. Um, and we, we just, there's not always answers. Sometimes tragic events are just tragic because life is tragic. Things happen that are tragic because there's sin in the world. Um, and somebody says, your friend's mom died, but salvation was assured and it brought unsafe family members to Christ. Great. That's wonderful. Sometimes we just have to accept, accept that we don't live in a perfect world and that sin is everywhere and that um, because of sin, there is mourning. Because of sin, these things happen. And there will be a day when we are in heaven with Christ and it will be perfect and all of our tears will be dried up. And those are the days that we can look forward to, that time in eternity with God. And sometimes in our lives now, we're just going to have to, I don't know, weather the storm. Just weather the storm and do the best you can to have faith in God. And if you can't have faith in him, just know he's still there waiting on the other side when you can have faith in him again. Because I think we all lose. We all lose our faith in God sometimes. So, um, guys, I know this is kind of a heavy scope. But like I said, it's been a hard week for me. And... Just a lot of things just kind of coming at me. Um, somebody said there's a song, I don't know what you're doing, is so good. And I've never heard that. So if you want to tweet it at me, feel free. Um, I mean, I don't know. Sometimes we can't just get on scope and be like, oh, hey, everything's so exciting and, and uh, joyful. And here's your five-step plan to how you have a better marriage. You know, and I'll check you later. Sometimes we just have to get on here and be like, oh, uh, yeah, this week was... I'm going to forget about this week, okay? Here's hoping to an, a better next week. And I can't tell you how many years I have, like, on 20, like, 2014 New Year's Eve, I was like, bye. Bye, Felicia. See ya. And then 2015, I was like, well, dang, nab it. Bye to you, too. I'm hoping 2016 is going to be better, <laughs> you know? It's just still waiting on it. But I think we have, we just say goodbye to bad years and hope for the best, right? Um, so guys, I don't know where you are this year or this moment or this week, but if you're going through something hard, just try to own it and then you have no choice but to ride it out. I mean, honestly, you can't change it. You have no choice but to ride it out. You kind of have to ride it out. So good luck on this and um, I should be back on Monday around the same time with a much more focused concept and scope. So guys, thanks for joining me. If you want to know what I've been blogging about, go to lovehopeadventure.com and I blog about, um, there's several blog posts up there about marriage and sex and all the wonderful things that you can work on this weekend. And I hope you guys have a great weekend too. So um, I'll check chat with you guys later.